Have you been wanting to get started with webinars, but you're not sure which equipment you need or which tools are the best? You've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to give you a list of the equipment you'll need to get started and our top recommendations for webinar tools. Let's get into it. Hello creators, I'm Ben Tolson from Podia, where we empower creators like you to make a living doing what you love. Figuring out the best equipment for hosting webinars can be time consuming. There are lots of options out there, but we've narrowed the list down to some of the best tools available that won't break the bank. First, here's a list of some of the equipment you'll need to get started. An internet connected PC, tablet, or smartphone. This is how you'll actually share your webinar on the internet. A camera. With the right software, you can use the built-in camera on your smartphone or tablet, but with a PC, we recommend using an HD webcam. Lights. Lighting equipment isn't absolutely necessary, but it can make your webinar appear more professional. A microphone. An external microphone can vastly improve the quality of your audio, whether that's with a USB microphone for your PC or a small condenser mic for your smartphone. A tripod. A tripod is the best way to stabilize your camera for a nice, steady shot. Presentation tools. You might want to use a whiteboard or some kind of easel pad as a visual aid for presenting your information. We'll get into using slides and screen sharing in another video. Now on to some recommendations. Cameras. If you're hosting your webinar using a tablet or smartphone, the rear-facing camera is probably at least 1080p resolution, if not 4K, and the quality of that camera is more than sufficient for hosting a webinar. If you have a PC, we recommend getting an external HD webcam. The Logitech HD Pro C920 has been around for a while, but it still tops the charts in just about every category. One of the best features is a free app from Logitech that allows you to adjust the camera's focus, contrast, and color. This camera normally goes for $79.99 brand new. They're in high demand right now, and I've seen used ones listed for as much as $250. So be sure to look around at different retailers so you can get a fair price. If you have a DSLR camera, you may actually be able to use it as your external camera. The Elgato CamLink is a device that converts an HDMI signal to USB and is recognized as a video input on your computer. This device is a bit more expensive than your standard webcam, but if you plan to stream often, it's a worthwhile investment because it unlocks the superior quality of your DSLR camera. Tripods. Webcams are usually designed to attach to the top of your computer, but the problem with using them this way is that they'll pick up extra movement from whatever surface your computer is sitting on, which can make your shot look shaky. A tripod fixes that problem and stabilizes your shot. If you're just starting out, look no further than this Amazon Basics lightweight camera stand. It's affordable and effective and should work with any camera you have. Now, before you rush out and add a tripod to your cart, stay tuned for my next recommendation, which can actually work as a tripod replacement. Lights. While you can achieve a good lighting look without adding extra lights, I recommend having at least a basic lighting solution so you can easily set up wherever you need to. The newer 18-inch ring lighting kit comes with an 18-inch diameter ring light with dimmable LED lights. It also comes with a light stand with mounting adapters that allow you to attach your smartphone or webcam and two color filters for changing the temperature of the light. My favorite thing about this kit is that it can essentially work like a tripod for your camera. So you've got your lighting and your camera all there on one stand. You can spend a little bit more and get a three point lighting kit, which can work well if you have a dedicated studio space, but for portability and ease of use, I would definitely go with the ring light. Microphones. Audio quality is a really important aspect of a video experience. When you're live streaming, you already have potential bandwidth issues working against your quality, so you want to provide the best audio possible from the start. The Blue Snowball is a fantastic USB microphone if you're just starting out. It has two different pickup modes depending on whether you're recording by yourself or with another person, and it's ready to go as soon as you plug it into your computer. If you're willing to spend a little bit more money, the Blue Yeti is just as easy to use as the Snowball, but is even better quality and has even more features. If you're using a smartphone or tablet, you can use a small condenser mic. The Shure MV88 is perfect if you have an iOS device, and the Rode VideoMic Me works with any smartphone with the standard TRRS jack or headphone input. Presentation tools. If you're not quite ready to create slides or figure out screen sharing, there are many other ways you can provide visual aids to go along with your webinar material. 
You could use index cards, a whiteboard, poster board, an easel pad, leftover cardboard from all your recent shipments, stuff like that. I'll link to some of my favorite presentation tools in the description below. That's going to do it for equipment recommendations. Hopefully this gets you one step closer to hosting an amazing webinar. In the next video, I'll take you through my recommendations for software and webinar hosting platforms. If you have any questions or if there are any equipment recommendations I missed, leave them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful and you want more content like this, click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you'll be sure not to miss any future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.